Hello and welcome to another Sprues and Brews unboxing. Today we're looking at Necromunda Hive Secundus, the new box game for Necromunda. So first of all I want to say a massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending us an early review copy to have a look at on the site. In this video we're going to be having a look at what is included in the box, what is new here to check out all the new models, hopefully have them painted and run through what Hive Secundus actually is because it's been a little bit unclear from the uh, the previews what this is, this is a new starter box for Necromunda, is this a self you know, self-contained game, is this an expansion, we'll find all this out as we go through it. But this is a really exciting one because it shifts the focus of Necromunda from Hive Primus we had originally, we've been out in the Ash Wastes for a couple of years, and now we are in Hive Secundus, which has been shut down due to a gene stealer infestation. And in this box we get the Malstrain Gene Stealers facing off against the uh, the Spire Hunters and the Vansar Tech Hunters. Now, um, people who've been playing Necromunda for a while will see that we've got a kind of Zone Mortalis set up again. Um, with It looks like a pre-kind of designed game map. There has been speculation that this is going to be a cooperative kind of board game approach to it. I'm not entirely convinced with the with the stat cards each side and the full rule book again we'll see this in full once we go into it um, but it is interesting that we've got those kind of close confines fighting as opposed to the uh, the freedom of the the deserts that we had in the previous season this is quite an exciting box as well because the spires obviously are old um, kits that people have been looking forward to coming back and we've got those new spire hunters who are going to get reinforced with some new kits later on and then the mouse drain uh, gene stealers as well, a gene stealer cult um, on Necromunda with some weird kind of genetically engineered gene stealers with them. So really, really looking forward to seeing kind of what they do with this. Looking at the back of the box, it does look like a self-contained kind of like starter box. So we've got dice in there, templates, rulers, and the rule book as well. Um, I suspect this will be a cool rule book, which let you run through kind of missions here. And then I think following this, there will be a kind of Hive Secunda supplement, which then has like the gang lists and stuff in. That's the approach that we saw for um, for the Ash Wastes too, so it wouldn't surprise me if that's how this one plays out. But yeah, without further ado, should we crack this open and have a look at what is inside? Now, this is £110 uh, retail. Obviously, it will be less if you get it from third parties. And yeah, there's a whole load of stuff in here. So we just slide that out of the way. First of all, we get the standard orange template sprue that we've seen before. Again, really handy in there if this is your first kind of entry to Necromunda. There are two sprues of, uh, they look like hive gangers. Yeah, so two ganger sprues, each with um, a couple of models on there. It looks like that there are alternate heads on some of the gene stealer sprues to make these kind of like gene stealer cultists which is cool, so again we've seen them before. We then have, what have we got here? This looks like it's a Spire Hunter. So we've got lots of cool parts on here. Yeah, very, very nice. So obviously the, um, the Spires are gonna get a full range, which is cool, so I suspect you'll be able to run them as a standalone gang in uh, your games of Necromunda. If it's anything like the olden days, they're going to be a super elite gang. But yeah, that's that's very cool. So we get one of those sprues. I don't know what that builds, whether one of them or two of them maybe. We'll have a look at the instructions shortly to see kind of what the breakup of that is. Um, you do also get two gene stealer sprues as well. So obviously these are kind of Genetically engineered, experimented gene stealers that some mad scientist on Necromunda has played with and managed to make gene stealers even more terrifying than they already were due to horrific experiments. I'm sensing a kind of like Wayland Dutini vibe from their aliens for this one, which I guess kind of fits. So yeah, you get two of these sprues, both identical. And then you get two of the new Vansar Hunter kit. So yeah, that other kit that with their sprue that we saw earlier must build both of the um, 
both of the Spirus and normally how um, kind of specialist games do their sprues is have like a, a single kit that builds single sprue that builds a couple of things and then have duplicate sprues in a box to build all the various uh, options but yeah these guys look really really cool obviously that's um, quite a few kits that um, Vansar have now so some cool options for them so again put them to one side we get some flying stands because there are a few flying gribblies in there and you also get a kind of bulkhead sprue this is for your doors and stuff for these um, 2D Zone Mortalis games there will be um, new Zone Mortalis scenery coming out which again I suspect will come out alongside the um, the kind of supplement when this comes out properly this looks like it's the original sprue from the re-release of Necromunda when again it originally came with some card tiles and stuff so yeah um, I've possibly got some of them painted up somewhere already but we'll get these painted up for the video but that is all the plastic stuff digging in we've got a lot of paper materials too so if we move that out of the way we do get a full bag of bases for everything in the box again there's own Mortalis bases and then everything else is in little kind of like card or paper sleeves. One of the things Games Workshop has done recently is move away from the single use plastic. So uh, it's presented a lot nicely now with kind of things in their own little bags. This I believe is the dice. If we pop this open, we then get dice in two colours. In fact, really nice colours. We've got kind of a turquoisey colour and a black with the same turquoise kind of re repeated on it. They're really, really nice dice. Yeah, I really like this theme. We then get a full box of cards. And it's really nice to see the, um, the cards in a box rather than just being loose. Again, we'll look at these properly a little bit later on with the stats. In fact, if we just slide this out, let's see what we get. So interestingly, the mouse drain stuff's got mouse drain points in the top corner which maybe does go in favour of this being a cooperative board game and the, the mouse train stuff's brought on kind of based on points that are generated during a game maybe which is interesting like I say there will be a full supplement coming out following this that um, you know gives you rules for running the gangs and stuff uh, at the time of recording this I don't know when that's out but um, I'm sure it's not going to be too far away it wasn't for Ash Wastes so yeah, we get stacked cards for all of the, the content of the box. And then you have got normal stack cards. So I'm guessing there will be profiles and some credit values for your um, your kind of adventurers that are heading in. And then it looks like we've got a whole load of under Hell's Territory cards as well. So these will be used for the scenarios and the like. So that's really cool. And loot as well. So yeah, again, we'll look at that in a bit more detail a little bit later on. Just wanted to pull those out and see what actually was included within there. In this, I assume, we've got the full Hive Secundus book. Again, really nicely uh, presented with the little kind of uh, emblem on the back of it. So let's break the seal of Lord Helmore and have a look at this. So softback rule book. We'll have a look at this in a bit more detail later on in the video once we've had a proper dig through it, but that's cool. We also get a sheet of tokens in there too, along with some reference sheets as well. So all the, all the usual bits and bobs that you need. This, I believe, has the playing surface on as well. So we've got a full, this is quite nice actually. Yeah, a full double-sided Zone Mortalis style um, maps. I believe there's two in there. And it looks like these follow the layout of the actual kind of Zone Mortalis as well. Obviously with some of the new ruined areas. So that's quite interesting. So yeah, that's double-sided. And there's actually another sheet in here too. So I suspect the two of these will go together for games. I'm sure you'd be able to use your existing Zone Mortalis tiles if you do have them. But this is quite nice giving um, you know, new players 
a plane surface that they can use. So again, we'll dig all into that a little bit later. Before we do that though, let's have a quick look at the assembly instructions and seeing how these all go together. Now for Necromunda, I'd always recommend having a proper look through the rules first to kind of find out how you want to put together the kits because um, there's often a lot of multiple options and stuff. Um, for the gene stealers, maybe not so much, but certainly for the um, the other gangers as we get to them, those gene stealers look so cool. So yeah, it looks like for the hive scum, there are some um, gene stealery heads that we can give them to mix them up a little bit. Other than that, they're the same kits that we got uh, a while ago. And then the Vansar Tech Hunter. So this is a new kit and it looks like there are quite a few different options here. Um, Long Laz and Reflection Cloaks, interesting. Laz gun options on there, Laz carbines. Combi weapon with a flamer and a man catcher. Yeah, a rad gun. Some interesting options here. I'm looking forward to seeing the kind of, the kit built up because, um, yeah, I think these are gonna be fun. And then the uh, the Spire Hunters as well. Again, it doesn't look like there's many weapon options on these. Oh, there is an option of Power Fist or a Power Talon. So again, that might be uh, relevant in the rules as well. So just make sure you look at that first before um, you decide how you're going to build them. And obviously get two of those on the same sprue. So yeah, very cool. So what we're going to do now is just jump to the future and have a look at the Necromunda rulebook in Hive Secundus. So let's dive into the Hive Secundus book and see what this is about. So obviously early in the video, I was a little unsure of what the makeup of this box was. Obviously I've had a chance to, uh, to read it and play through it now. And it is a two player kind of versus box, but it is um, interestingly kind of set out as a really nice way of teaching new players how to play Necromunda. And um, we'll see when we get to the campaign in a little bit, but essentially the um, the arbitrator runs all the Malstrain gene stealers and everything with the player um, taking control of the Spire Hunter and the Van Sar. And it's kind of put together in such a way that it makes it easy for someone to learn how to play the game or two new players to learn how to play the game as a nice little entry point before they get into kind of Necromunda proper, which is really cool. It's not like a board game, it's not like Kill Team, it is very much, you know, real full fat Necromunda just on those paper maps. So if you were worried that this was like diluted Necromunda, don't, it is very much the full experience. From a lore point of view, we get some really cool stuff here as well. Now we saw in the, um, in the Aranthian Succession series that the, the Aranthians have returned back in the mists of time. They used to rule the planet. They were basically these giant mechanical men. And Hive Secundus was the kind of the repository of all their knowledge and information. It was full of these kind of data spires that had all this information in, kind of installed on them that, um, you know, very valuable to the, the various kind of forces on Necromunda nowadays. A little while after, the Adeptus Mechanicus uh, commissioned a guy to try and develop a cure to the Gene Stealer curse. And what they did was send this, um, this kind of bioengineer guy to Hive Secundus with some sample gene stealers in order to try and develop a cure. Now, we've all seen alien films before. We all know this ends really, really badly. And essentially, it had gone on for years, lots of experimentation. He hadn't really kind of got to the bottom of it. So in a moment of madness, he hooks himself up in like a neural link with the kind of the one remaining gene stealer that he's got and um, whether it has some kind of influence on him or it takes control of him he ends up releasing this it infects him with the curse and fast forward you know a couple of years the entirety of Hive Secundus is infestated with gene stealers um, obviously Necromunda slash the Imperium isn't too happy about this they send in the Imperial Guard they send in the Imperial Fists and then they do what Ripley suggests in Aliens and just nuke the entire site from orbit. Um, they get the um, geosynchronous space station, the Aya Selenar, 
to just irradiate the entire uh, hive destroying the whole thing and destroying the gene stealer menace. Unfortunately, they're a little bit more resilient than that and deep within the earth, the gene stealer survived and a side effect of all the radiation and nastiness that's been sent down on them, they've started mutating as well. They've been cut off from the hive mind, um, which interestingly, they um, the, the gene stealers, the tyranids at large, have no interest in taking Necromunda because these gene stealers are so kind of corrupted and wrong that they won't go anywhere near it. So in a weird kind of way, um, the, the, the cure to the gene stealer court has been found, um, only, you know, it's got a high human cost to it. But yeah, really interesting concept, and obviously all the, the gene stealers and the, and the kind of things that they create, they don't follow the... the traditional cycle of gene stealer cults and, and infant gene stealers. Instead, they were, you know, a firstborn might be a gene stealer followed by another gene stealer followed by one that's just a kind of hybrid. There's no kind of set rhyme or reason to it, which makes the spread quite fast and deadly. They still have this patriarch that's on this giant kind of like throne of bones down in the, the hives. And and they gathered together all these kind of data crystals, all these data spires, um, and collected them within his throne room. Which, whether the the kind of the, the gene stealers and the cult that's growing around them have done that to lure people in, um, or whether it's the gene stealer maybe wanting to help the um, the Adeptus Mechanicus researcher who is died and now is getting regurgitated up occasionally by the gene sealer strain to give him access to that information to maybe you know reverse the mutation and stuff that's happening and um, either way lots of parties in particular tech hunters from the Vansar and the Spiras who were like the, the noble born of House Helmore are heading into Hive Secundus now to um, to kind of prove their might and to obtain this information. And that's essentially what kind of sets up the storyline for this, this game. Um, it will get expanded further in the um, upcoming source book that's following this, but this game is fully self-contained and has everything that you need to play it. So obviously we see all the contents here, and I think it is gonna be a really, really nice intro to playing Necromunda if you've never played it before. We get the full core rules in here, um, now one thing that isn't included is the trading house, but I believe there's a download you can have off Warhammer Community that does have that, and obviously it's in a few kind of source books too. But yeah, this is all based off the, the most recent um, rules uh, kind of core book that came out not long ago. So again, if you've not played Necromunda before, you have got the full kind of rules on how to play it here, which is really, really good to see as well. So yeah, if if you you know if you already play the game, um, it's never a bad thing having the spare rules and the self-contained campaign in here is really cool too. Now you do get the gang creation rules. Obviously, you need the the various kind of house of books for the full rules for them. But both of the gangs that are included within the box are included in here as well. So you do get all the credit values and stuff, which is really good to see. So yeah, it's um, very much a, a how to play Necromunda, this box, which is, which is good to see. So yeah, we'll skip past the core rules because we've seen all these uh, quite a few times. If you're, if you're a fan of the channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Necromunda. And um, yeah, this is probably about the fifth, this edition, the fifth version of the rules that I've had. Um, but it, it makes sense. This is an introductory box, isn't it? It's, it's designed for people who are getting into the game. And then there's some cool models and campaign stuff for people who already play the game. So nothing unusual here that we don't know before. It all works the same way. Where stuff does get new is when we get onto the campaign itself, because that's got quite an interesting... Uh, set up and uh, looking forward to kind of telling you guys about that. You get all the kind of rules for visiting the trading post but not the actual um, kind of trading post list. Uh, Psychers also get listed so it is like the full the full rules as well. 
So yeah, you're not missing out on anything by getting this one. Vehicle rules aren't included in here, but obviously this season we are in the underhells. So while you might have one-off games out in the Ash Wastes, that isn't the focus of this box. So the underhells campaign is the kind of self-contained campaign that's within this box, which revolves around a spy hunter and a expeditionary group of Vansar coming down into the underhells to try and retrieve this valuable data while fighting off against the um, the Malstrain gene stealer brood that's kind of lurking within the depths. And this is quite a cool campaign. Designed for two players, one playing as the, um, the, the, the quote marks, the good guys, the spy hunter and the, uh, the Vansar, um, they have an interest in gang which we'll see in a bit essentially you take one spy hunter and then you can take a number of, of vansar tech hunters again with the points being quite expensive you're only going to have four or five tech hunters plus your spire so quite an elite kind of gang um the arbitrator or the, the other player uh, controlling the mouth strain gene stealers doesn't have like a list as such and doesn't have credits to spend on them instead as the campaign goes up they get a number of points that can be spent from mission to mission on creating the inhabitants of that mission. So they'll always have a number of um, kind of just brood, uh, brother, ganger guys. Um, that will be kind of listed in the scenario. But then they've got a number of points they can spend on additional like gangers or on the kind of the gene stealers themselves. So it gives them a bit of flexibility to kind of throw in some cool stuff. And there's a bit of a scalability to that as well. As they get deeper down into the hive, the more gene stealers turn up. So yeah, really interesting, um, really interesting thing. There's no um, kind of getting additional gangers or equipment and stuff as you get through this. You are you are kind of stuck in there. You could find archaeotech as you're going along and can equip that and use that, and that's another like mechanic that we've got here. But you know we're, we're cut off. From Hive Primus here, we're in the absolute hells of the irradiated wasteland of this hive. So you can't exactly nip to the nearest Tesco to get some equipment halfway through. So again, nice little twist. And a lot of it is driven through the cards that are in the boxed game as well. And basically as we go through, you get this, this Archeo loot that you spend the um, the kind of tech points that you acquire over the campaign. You can either spend a small amount to get a random one or a large amount to get a specific one, which is pretty cool. And then there's territories as well. Same as in like most campaigns. Again, it's a little bit different because the territories can only be claimed by the um, by the incursion gang, so that the spy hunter and friends like with most territories in Necromunda, you do get a boon for doing them, but one thing you've got to bear in mind, each campaign cycle, you pick which territory you're going to go for, and depending on which one you choose, the mouse train player gets additional uh, mouse train points to spend on their gang. So you see here, um, some of them in the initial kind of level one dive, give an additional one MP to the, the mouse train player, where other ones don't give the mouse train a modifier, but the bonuses are maybe not quite as good as the other ones. As you get deeper, this kind of magnifies more. So Descent 1, for example, you've got an option that gives 2 MP, uh, with the boom being you can reroll the scenario, or you can gamble and go for one that gives the mouse train player 4 MP, which is like, a gene stealer and a termite, you know, it's a big a big difference to the kind of forces you're going to be facing, but you can negate the effects of a single lasting injury roll. So you would kind of weigh up the pros and cons of do you go for the harder one, um, knowing that you can be up against more enemies, but you can get a better reward out of it. So it makes it work really well for a two player campaign, because normally in a multiplayer campaign, you'd all be fighting over different territories, etc. In this one, because there's only the two of you, it's, a, it's kind of weighing up the odds of do you want to go for a difficult one or a, an easier one. And essentially each kind of campaign week you'll go through a different one of these descents until eventually you get to the Brood Throne itself, where the Maelstrom player has a ridiculous 14 extra MP 
and basically just endless waves of gene stealers. Think um, Ripley heading down into the hive in Aliens, and that's the kind of idea that you're going for. So, yeah, very, very cool. Um, it's it's great fun. And again, it captures more of that. Yeah, I, I love the Alien film, so it absolutely captures that kind of vibe. Um, while there are kind of maps in the board, you are able to just set up using Zone Mortalis, Zone Mortalis tiles if you want to. That is a valid option. Um, I think a lot of people probably will be using those mats, but at least it does give you the um, the potential for crafting your own boards. And again, I can see some really cool stuff there with people making their own custom um, brood thrones and stuff like that. One thing that is seen in Underhive games is that it's pitch black. So the players will have to roll to see what the visibility is like. Sometimes it's it's not very you know far at all. Sometimes you can see quite a bit. Essentially, if it's pitch black, everyone's got the hidden condition. But if they make a noise, such as, you know, open the door, fire up and something, they reveal themselves. So, again, it's a bit of a game of Russian roulette if you are trying to um, deal with something. Especially with when you're fighting the, uh, the mouse drains, you're going to start with just the kind of, like, gangers. And there'll be a couple of gene stealers crawling around. You absolutely do not want to attach, um, attract their attention because they are really, really nasty. Um, there are collapse sections on the board as well, which can be dangerous. You can go prone, you can go out of action, which is, um, yeah, obviously when you've got quite an elite gang as well, you're going to struggle. So yeah, um, worth noting that the Spira and the Gene Steelers aren't affected by that gloom as well. So your Spira is quite kind of independent. He can stomp ahead and... Um, you know, deal with the gene stealers. Likewise, your gene stealers can happily run along and ambush people without them even seeing them. So there's lots of shenanigans going on there. Uh, quite a cool little thing, again, linking into the kind of like sci-fi horror theme of it, is the terror in the dark rule. So um, the incursion fighters always have to be within six inches of a, another um, ganger. The spire isn't affected to that because he doesn't care, but the other ones want a buddy nearby. If they're ever not um, within six inches of a friendly fighter, they've got to do a nerve test or become broken as they just flee into the darkness. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And then we've got the uh, the data fragments as well, the data crystal stacks where you're getting the information. And a lot of the scenarios revolve around extracting that information. There are plastic kits coming of this for using in, I guess, main full Necromunda games. For the purposes of the campaign, they're pre-drawn on the on the mats as well, so you've got everything everything that you need. But yeah, there's a nice selection of different missions. Again, they all revolve around you know going through these tiles. You could easily build them up using Zone Mortalis stuff if you wanted to make it a bit more 3D. I think it does work better as like a corridors and, and tunnels rather than having this as 3D, uh, kind of vertical. I think it kind of adds to the Again, alien, walking down corridors kind of vibe to it. Um, so yeah, lots of fun stuff here. Again, culminating up to the um, Champion of the Mouse Strain mission, which is the big kind of like final one, where, um, yeah, you're facing off against the, the kind of brood lord itself. So yeah, really, really cool. Now we do get the, the rules in here for the gangs too. So the Secundan Incursion Gang, like I said, you have a Spira, and then you have, you can actually take any gang from the game, so if you wanted Escher or Dalak, you could do that. But printed in the book are the rules for the new Vansar models and the, the Spira. So these are very similar to how they operated in old Necromunda. Uh, Spiras get two activations each, so that's um, kind of four different actions they can do per turn, which is really good. And they've got a kill count. As they kill things, this tally ticks up. And then as they hit a certain level, you get to unlock different uh, kind of bonuses on your your rig. Increases your points cost, but it makes you stronger. And um, yeah, basically you want to be killing stuff as a spiders and leveling up your guy. Equally, they don't go um, out of action like a normal ganger would. Instead, they accrue glitches on their rig as well. So you're not going to lose one. Um, unless something really bad happens on the glitches table. But um, again, it adds a bit of flavour. You can spend 
um, your kill count in order to clear glitches as well. So that means you can afford to be quite reckless and aggressive with them as well, which is cool. It kind of fits to the kind of hot-headed youths that are in the latest tech exploring into the, uh, the Underhive. So here's a look at the Urus Spy Hunter himself. Obviously the very expensive 350 credits and you're talking 400 plus once you've given them some upgrades, give them um, Power Fist for 50 credits, Disintegration Matrix which is a nasty short range gun for 60 credits. These add up very quickly. You're only going to have one of these guys as well. You do get two in the box but again for the purposes of this kind of game you can only have the one Urus in there. You can then take some Vansar Tech Hunter Specialists with them as well. So these are a new specialists for the Vansars that can lean into one of four different disciplines. An Auger Tech, a Biotechnicist, a Gun Tech or a Technomat. Um, and they have different equipments as well. So you've got a, a healing one, you've got one with like a Vox Array, you've got one that can use special weapons. And again, for Vansar players, this is really cool because it gives you a lot of um, cool options for your, for your games. All of the different weapon options and armor options and, and all the little doodads on them uh, are all on the sprue as well. So, like I said, my list that I put together when we initially played, it was a Spy Hunter and four of these guys. One of each specialist with, like, one was a medic, one was the, the kind of auger scanner and stuff. And um, yeah, it gives you a nice varied force, but you are super elite. Um, obviously for Vansar players, you can put these into your normal gang as well as a specialist. So if you are playing through a full campaign, uh, you have got use for these too, but they're really, really nice. Um, and then they've got the Carrier Tid, which is a exotic beast that the um, Spy Hunters can take. These are pretty cool as well. Um, they're very lucky. They've got a 3 plus save that can't be modified at all, which is really, really cool. Um, and he's got a kind of a, an aura of luck on his um, parent Spy Hunter. Um, they can re-roll a failed save and a failed ammo test once per round. So really worth taking, especially if you take some of the nasty weapons as well. For 90 points, it's worth kind of keeping your guys in the fight. With again the mouth strain as well. These are very cool. So, like I say, they don't have credit values. Instead, you start off with a, with a points value uh, based on the scenario and then based on the territory that's picked, you'll get a modifier to that. You have to take at least brood scum equaling what's mentioned in the scenario. So some might say four brood scum, some might say six. So you've got to pay for them out of your initial points and then anything you've got left over, you can spell on the Terramites or the Gene Stealers. Um, gene stealers are restricted by how deep you are as well. With level 1 on the first descent, a maximum of 1. That jumps up to 3 on the second level. 4 on the third level. Then once you get to the blood throne, it is just all the gene stealers all the time. So, uh, yeah, watch out. Brood scum are just normal kind of hive scum with a range of different weapons. You can take up to 40 credits worth for each of your guys. So you can take a bit of a variety of different weapons there. Their job is to just slow down the spy hunter, giving time for your gene stealer to get in. These guys are pretty lethal as well. With a whole host of skills, dodge, evade, nerves of steel, rain of blows. They, um, they count as having a bio booster and mesh armor. They are very quick. They've got a lot of attacks. They are very lethal. So you don't want to be attacked by one of these. And then you've got the Terramites as well. They can move freely between levels and through terrain and stuff as well. So they're quite good for scouting ahead. So really nice. I hope these get expanded more in the upcoming supplement too. At the minute, obviously, without credits, you're not going to be able to take them in a normal game. Just this self-contained campaign. I'm fairly certain that when the new supplement comes out, they will have credits so you can like run these as a gang. And yeah, it's a really, really nice um, book. I am um, I really enjoyed painting these guys up and I was kind of pleasantly surprised on how this kind of book operated as a kind of like self-contained how to learn Necromunda. I think that's a really nice way of doing it. Don't go diving in straight away to, you know, multiplayer campaigns and all the complexity of that. Um, but still having the full core rules in there, I think it's a really good decision that makes it kind of a lot easier to pick up and learn to play the game. 
So yeah, and like all the normal reference stuff in the back as well. So what we're going to do now is have a look at the painted miniatures from the Hive Secunda set. So it's been a busy few weeks painting up the contents of the box, but really happy with how they turned out. Let's have a look at the um, the brood gangers first. And I've done these in a similar scheme to my um, GC the Cult's Army, just to keep some consistency across them. I know technically these aren't part of the, you know, even the Tyranids don't accept the uh, the hybrids in the in the gene stealers themselves anymore. But I really like this scheme, so I thought I'd do them for this. Now you'll see it's just the basic like Ganga Sprue, the hive scum. Um, but you get some additional heads on the gene stealer sprue, which lets you um, spruce these up quite a bit and make them look very, you know, alien compared to the normal guys. So obviously built these with a range of different weapon options. So we've got some options during the games. But yeah, really happy with how these turned out. Um, we'll go to the mites next. And these are really cool models too. Really enjoyed working on these. They're a little bit fiddly to build and attach the bases. Most of these have lost various legs and spiky bits. Um, you're you're going to break some. I, I think I might just build one fully intact and that was the last one that I built. So yeah, they are a little bit fiddly. Um, you do tricky bit as well, without having them attached to the flying stand, they're going to be a little bit hard to paint as well. So what I did is wrap some masking tape around the stand, spray it up, and then remove the masking tape. Then at least you have got a kind of sturdy arm for them to sit on, rather than having to, um, yeah, faff around trying to paint them, because they are going to be difficult if you don't attach them. But they're really nice models though. The stars of the show though are the mouse strain gene stealers. Now as an old school Gene Steelers player, I had to do these in the classic like purple and blue scheme, and they still look really nice in that scheme. Again, from a law point of view, these would probably be a bit more kind of like um, colourless as they've been down in the depths and the pigmentation of their skin starts to go through radiation and lack of light. But I think this still works with them, and they still look really sinister. And I don't know, I. I Again, I mentioned Alien a few times during the film. You can't get more Alien knockoff than the original Gene Steelers out of uh, Space Hawk. So I wanted to kind of give them a bit of a nod to that. But yeah, they're suitably weird. There's like... Tyranid creatures are very symmetrical. The mouse strain are quite the opposite. They're all disfigured and odd numbers of arms and weird eyes and... The weird fins on the back aren't symmetrical. They've not got like the right number of ridges on them. They are just very, very strange. Um, in one of the campaigns as well, you've got the option for a, like an alpha gene stealer. So there is like a Yamago head here, included on the sprue. So I built that one to represent that as well in the games. He's nice and distinct then compared to the other gene stealers. But yeah, these are probably my favourite models from the set because they are just very, very cool. Moving on to the Spy Hunters. These I wanted to do in a metallic green scheme, so I sprayed them black. I built up a few different gradients of silver and um, just like stippled it on and then made sure that the raised areas were a bit shinier. And then I airbrushed the entire thing in Tamiya clear green which then leaves it with this nice kind of metallic green effect that the camera is really not focusing on. So yeah, really happy with those. Obviously you get two of those in the box, so you're able to build kind of one with each weapon loadout as well. So you've got some options for your campaigns as well. So yeah, they're really nice. And then Evil Winged Baby. Again, he's a really nice model as well. And he's included on the sprue with the Spire Hunters. And then we've got the Vansar uh, Tech Hunters. Again, really, really nice kits. Um, I just followed the instructions. You could probably, um, you know, go a bit, be a bit more creative on them. But my logic was that really these are going to be things that you're going to be adding occasionally to a gang. You're not going to have an entire gang made up of these. So it made sense to have every option kind of like represented. So if they did come up in games, I'd, uh, I'd be able to use them. And again, really, really nice kits. 
really enjoyed using these. I've not played um, with Vansar recently, so I'm tempted to build up some more of them to go alongside these. But yeah, very, very nice models. And a few different um, examples of armour on them as well. So like we said earlier, all the different kind of loadouts that you can have are represented in the kit too, which is really good. Um, and then finally in the kit as well, you also get this from the old original new Necromunda box. The old bulkheads and stuff. Again, these were just sprayed black and then stippled up various colours to make the kind of bulkheads and doors and stuff. So yeah, I really enjoyed working on all this stuff. So yeah, that is our look at Necromunda Hive Secundus. Where there's loads more Necromunda stuff coming on the horizon and we're really, really looking forward to playing some more. And um, Necromunda is one of my favourite Games Workshop games, so if you've not played it before, this is the perfect entry point. Especially if you've got a friend and you want to split the forces, it lets you both learn the game before you kind of like get into the whole kind of picking your gang and, and expanding it out and all the fun that comes with that. So yeah, really, really recommend picking this up. And if you're an existing player, just for the miniatures alone, it's worth picking up, it's really cool. So yeah, we do have a full write-up over on spruceandbrews.com as well. We're going into a bit more detail on the on the rules and the campaign and everything. And again, we have some nice miniature shots on there as well. So make sure to check that out. So yeah, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this video. We do lots of unboxings and videos like this. We want to have a few more um, gameplay sessions on as well. We uh, really want to do a um, the whole campaign of um, Hive Secundus as well. So me and Dave will play through that and do some missions. So stay tuned to the website because the first episode of that will probably be up soon. Uh, and we're looking forward to sharing that with you. Uh, if you don't already as well, why not give us a follow, um, like him and comment on the video really does help with the algorithm and get this to as many people as possible, which really does help kind of support the site. And if you do want to help us out as well, we have an affiliate link to Element Games in the description. Anything you buy through that, we get a bit of a kickback, which goes towards running costs and uh, running the site and everything. But yeah, until next time, have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.